Hello everyone and welcome to Respectful Dave. Today we're going to play a game and I'm going to walk you through what I think. So my thought process, how I play chess. Your job as a viewer is to pause the video from time to time, ask yourself, hey, what, what would I play in this position? Compare what you think with what I think and then we can all learn and we can be happy and we're going to have fun. Ooh, so we found the game, we're going to play E4. We're, all pl we're playing with the white pieces and we're the opening stage of the game. David, what do you do in the opening? Or David, how many stages are there in the game? There are three stages, the opening, the middle game, and the end game. So in the opening, you want to castle as quickly as possible. And that's what I'm going to try to do in this game. I'm going to play g3, bishop g2. My opponent is, is, is attacking my pawn. So even though I did just say, this is very important, by the way. Even though I just said, castle as quickly as possible, you wouldn't like to play a move like bishop g2 because maybe this is a problem, right? So why don't you just first defend this pawn? And then you can play bishop g2, you can castle, and now you would be um, following what the opening principles say. Principles are there to guide you. That's very important. They're, they're guiding. They're, they're meant to guide you rather than for you to follow them blindly. Um, keep that in mind. You should be pragmatic. You should be able to adapt to new circumstances. So my opponent pins my, my knight. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask that question, hey, what, what would you like to do? Would you like to take my knight or would you like to go back? My opponent, sorry, decides to go back. And I'm going to play c3. This is killing, or this is what we call killing the knight, because now the knight's jumps to b4 and to d4 are not possible anymore. Or, well, they're possible, but they're bad moves, yeah. Um, this would be losing, because I'm giving up a, knight, a pawn for a knight, and that's that's incredible. And on top of that, I'm also, it's multifunctional, this move, it's preparing queen c2. David, why do you want your queen on c2? Number one, it unpins um, my, from this diagonal, so this bishop would, would have been pinning the knight. Um, but now it's no longer doing, so I could move the knight, uh, finally, because this queen is not, no longer behind, so I wouldn't lose my queen, which is good, of course. And secondly, I'm also um, connecting my rooks in the future, so it's very, very, it has many advantages, that move. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play b3. David, it looks weird what you're doing. You're moving pawns in this weird way. Well, what matters in chess is not how it looks, but what you're doing, right? So it might look weird, but you have to, um, you have to be uh, more, you have to be more uh, rational about that. You have to think more about it rather than just saying, ah, oh, it looks weird, so I'm not going to do it. Well, it might look weird. Everything looks weird if you don't, um, if you don't, um, Everything looks weird, but if you don't, sorry, this is what I mean. Everything looks weird, but if you don't do the work, if you don't go through your, if you're not strict with yourself and you don't say to yourself, hey, it might look weird, but maybe, maybe I have to find a good reason. That's not a good reason, right? So looking weird is not a good reason. What, what is a good reason is, hey, in this position, if I play this move, I lose because of this, this, and that. That's how chess works. Oh, okay. what, what is going on here? So bishop takes f3. I can't take with the bishop because this knight is under attack. So the next thing I think is I have to take with the, the knight. But sometimes I think, well, should I play queen takes d3 first and then take the f3 bishop? That's what you should do normally in chess games. You, so you should think of vision suits. You should think of different versions of, of doing the same thing. And I think what I will do is I'm going to play... I'm gonna play knight takes f3 because against knight takes e4, I'm I'm I have something under my sleeve, and against queen takes e4, I I wasn't convinced about this, but maybe it does work. Maybe maybe I should have been more careful about this. So what I thought initially is that I could take back, and um, it is true that knight takes g3 is a threat, for example. So this bishop is doing very very well. But that being said. I thought I had some rook e1 idea. It might not, it might be that I'm already a little bit worse. So rook e1 is losing to knight takes g3, which is a problem. Hmm. It is a problem. So when you're losing in chess, this may, maybe this is going to change um, how instructive this is. But when you're losing in chess, what you want to do is make things complicated. Yeah. So in this position, I'm a little bit um, getting worried because I'm down a pawn. Um, Knight takes g3 is a threat. It's not. It's not ideal. It's 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 worse than ideal, right? So what you want to do is um, make things less clear because if it's already going down for you, if you stay still and you just roll up and die, 
It's going to be very easy for your opponent. In fact, that's what everyone wants their opponent to do, to roll up and die. Um, so I'm going to go C4. Now C5 is a problem, and my opponent is claiming that they saw everything. But now, mm, I didn't see this move. I take C5, I guess. And it's very complicated. It's very complicated, which is what I want. But unfortunately, it's a little bit too complicated, and it's clearly better for my opponent. So it might not be as challenging as what I initially wanted. On the other hand, if my opponent changes, yeah, exchanges the knight for the bishop, now we got opposite color bishops, with, which might, sorry, which might, and just might, be a draw. Um, so I'm going to play rook a1. Rook a5 is kind of forced, because if, if, if my opponent lets a5 happen, I get to trade pawns, and one very, very important tip or piece of advice is, when you're losing, you should trade pawns, in a general basis. Now, David, didn't you blunder bishop d4? No, I have rook d1, making the most of the pin. So, I'm being as tricky as possible because, um, well, that's what you should do. Oh, I see. My opponent is saying rook d1. David, you're going to lose because of this. So, I'm going to play rook d2. What is the idea? The same, right? I mean, ideally, I would like to keep my rook on b2, so it, it attacks d7. But, unfortunately, I'm going to have to do uh, rook d2 because of what we already talked about. Yeah, so rook d2 is pinning this bishop. I want to play rook d1. In fact, that's a big threat. If my opponent doesn't do anything about that, I'm going to I'm just going to go ahead and play rook d1, putting more pressure in d4 bishop. Wow, okay. That's that one I didn't see. So what if I take? Bishop takes a1, bishop takes a7. It's it's actually funny. We have a symmetrical pawn structure, right? So what is my opponent doing? Play rook e1. So in the same way, it was an idea to play rook d1 and bishop takes f2 for my opponent. My opponent thought that after rook d5, bishop takes d5. Bishop takes a1 was clever, but unfortunately he blundered, or what I think they blundered is he or she, by the way. They blundered bishop takes a7. Check, same idea. So, it's funny. It's, 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 it's curious. So I'm going to play rook e7. Now I invade the 7th rank, which is very good for my rook, of course. And I should be able to to put some pressure into my opponent. I don't know if this is objectively winning, but definitely I could I could put some pressure to my opponent. Already something like b5 might be losing because of rook e4. And c5. Every time I play rook e4, every time I put pressure in this bishop, you either protect it with c5 or let the exchange of rooks happen, which would both be good for me. So I'm going to attack. I'm going to take this. Expecting c4. Okay, not c4. Rook g3 is a threat, so I'm going to play king g2. Taking it slow. I'm going to play h4. Make sure that my opponent has no threats. Nothing real. I'm going to take a second pawn, and now I think my opponent is in trouble. Now I think my opponent is in trouble, definitely. So now I have to go slowly. Keep going slowly, keep improving my position little by little. It might not happen in one move, it might not happen in two moves. It's probably going to take a while. So... I'm going to prove my 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 king's position. I'm going to activate my king. So, what a difference between the king on g2 and the king on d5. And the reason why I'm doing that is because now maybe mm, rook a6 is a big threat or maybe or maybe this king will support this pawn in some sort of end game. So, there's a massive difference between the king the king being on g2 and the king being on on d5. I'm going to play a7 now I think you you can start feeling the the difference between the king's uh, the king's um, position in g2 and the king position in b7 for example, which um, is, is massive. Now how do we continue this? I can play something like f3, which provokes this, but would be losing because of something like that. And our opponent run out of time, but I think it's already a difficult position because what is black going to play? If black plays something like h, uh, sorry, g5, for uh, for instance, king e6 is losing immediately to rook e8. But if our opponent plays something like g5, same idea, I use that knowledge I just talked about, h takes g5, and black has to take with either the rook, sorry, if, if black takes with the king or the pawn, it's all both losing because both of them have a check. So on f8 or on g8. And yeah, that would be bad for black. In fact, it's already a difficult position for black, because if you play bishop e3, then rook d5. Probably black has to wait with the rook, but that's very sad. 
and eventually White would be able to win this. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it was instructive. I know it was a little bit uh, sketchy over there. It was a little bit of a, I got a losing position, but I hope it was instructive from the point of view of, uh, or from the side of things that um, you should not resign when you're lost. You should make things complicated. And this was a good example. I didn't think I was going to make it. Um, and in truth, having a lost position is always very difficult to have, but that's part of being resilient. In order to be a good chess player, you have to be patient and try your very best to make things complicated. Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day.